up, Lord Jesus. Pull up. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're going to do, what you yet to do, Lord Jesus, yes, for all Lord. what you're going to yes, do. Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Verses 1 through 11. It can 
involve any type of sinful activity that would bring pleasure to the body. Examples are sexual sins, gossip, physical violence, alcohol, or drugs. Now, the lust of the eyes is that temptation to look upon things we shouldn't look upon yeah. or to have things that we shouldn't have. Yeah. In other words, it is to cast our eyes upon something with desire or pleasure, even though God has told us not to look upon those things. All right. An example of this is a head of covenant. Thou shalt not covet was the 10th commandment God gave the Israelites. Covet means to have a yearning or a strong to or a strong desire to have something that rightfully belongs to someone else. Pornography, desiring other material possession, status, and appearance. Like when David saw Bathsheba, he yearned for someone else's wife. Now that's covenant. Now the pride of life is that sinful temptation to excess greatness or power that we all feel the temptation to gain. Pride itself is one of the sins that God hates the most. It is a sin that made Lucifer, who was once a beautiful angel, turn into Satan, the adversary. Example of the pride of life is when you desire to have position of power over others in the way that puffs you up for the sake of bragging rights. Satan himself fell in this category. For in Isaiah 14 and 14, he said, I will exceed above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. See, Satan was filled with so much pride that he wanted to be God. Okay, let's go to the scriptures again. I'm, like, I'm not like Tony. I don't like to mix all my food together. But I am going to use his spirit spiritual concoction and mix another verse in on you. All right. All right. I know you remember in Genesis that Eve herself was tempted by Satan. Mm -hmm. The difference between Eve and Jesus' encounter with Satan was that Eve was succumb to the temptation, uh -huh. meaning she failed to resist the temptation. See, on. Jesus Bring resisted the temptation. Yeah. So Satan parked in Matthew and turned with me to Genesis 3 and 6. Things will I give thee, 
if thou wilt fall down and worship me. That's the pride of life. As you see, there was a difference between Eve, between when Eve was tempted versus when Jesus was tempted. Like I said earlier, Eve had a full-blown conversation with Satan. Jesus' response was non-negotiable. The first time Satan tried to tempt Jesus, Jesus said, It is written, Thou shalt not live by bread alone. The second time he tried something, he said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt thy Lord thy God. Finally, he said, Get thee hence behind me, Satan, for it is written. Scriptures. Are you feeding the scriptures into your heart daily? Right. The scriptures tell us to hide thy word in your heart that you may not sin against thee. That's against God. You got to have the scriptures here so you know how to fight when temptation comes. The scriptures are spiritual food and you must eat from them every day. You see, Jesus did not discuss it with Satan. He said what he said, and that was it. He knew the scriptures, and he knew how to use them when answering Satan. Are you walking close enough to the Lord that when temptation comes, you can recognize them through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit? Remember, temptation is only the question. Your response is the answer. Now, don't you know temptation comes more when you are tired? Yeah. Under stress, yeah. when you are alone, yeah. and when you're away from your family. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you come down from a spiritual high and not expecting it. Not only will the enemy attack after a spiritual high, he will attack after a spiritual low, too. All right. Don't you know temptation will show up when you withdraw from church attendance? Right. <laughs> now to my Christians, borderline Christians, and those who say they are still in a work in, in work, Christian. Okay. I'm here to tell you that on this side of eternity, uh -huh. you will never arrive at a place where you are temptation free. Right. You are never so spiritual right. that something can't get to you. Right. Temptation is not meant to weaken us, but to make us become even stronger through yeah. our damn. Yes. I'm almost finished, and I ain't even gave my topic yet. All right. In the movie Friday, with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, Y'all don't see Friday. Don't like Friday. Right. Don't see Friday. There was a character name, character on there by the name of Felicia. Uh -huh. Now Felicia was worsome, as my grandfather would say. She was annoying and always wanted to borrow something. Uh -huh. But though it was two words that Ice Cube used to get rid of Felicia. Buy Felicia, uh -huh. and that's my time. <laughs> That's what we have to tell that annoying, yeah. get on your nerve, yeah. always want to hear something, ugly, spanky, tricky devil. Buy right. devil yeah. or devil buy and walk away. Don't stay to debate. Remember, a fish cannot be caught if he does not open his mouth. Right. James 4 and 7 said, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, by devil, and you will, and he will flee from you. Somebody in here shout, by devil, by devil. Get, thee, get thee hence behind me. Get thee hence behind me. First Corinthians 10 and 13 said, there has no temptation taken, but such is coming to me. But God is faithful, who will not suffer us to be tempted above that he are able. But with, but with the temptation, I always make a way to escape. That's why that he may be able to bear it. You see, no matter how tempted you may be in a situation, right. Jesus felt that same temptation. All right. God promised us that no matter how hard the temptation is, he will always provide a escape route. Right. Learn to respond to, to, to temptation the same way Jesus responded to Satan. We should all have God's word in our minds and hearts so that we can rebuke sin and evil and resist it. All right. The Bible said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. I saw a story that I would like to share with you. A woman was laying on a float in the Gulf of Mexico. She was enjoying the comfort of relaxing on an inflated cushion that kept her afloat. When she realized that she had been swept away about a half mile out from the beach, she began to scream, but nobody heard her. A Coast Guard craft found her five miles from the place where she would first enter the water. She did not see her danger until she was beyond her own strength and ability. Mm -hmm. The same will happen to us if we do not take temptation seriously. 
Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin will cost you more than you want to pay. But ultimately, sin begins with temptation. So I stopped by this morning to tell you, yield not to temptation for yielding this sin. Each victory will help you or some others to win. Fight manually onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus and he will carry you through. May God deliver you from your temptation and keep you from evil. Thank you.